each and every one of you here this morning. Glad you decided to attend our worship service this morning. I'd like to know if you're visiting with us this morning that you're our honored guest. We'd like you to come back each and every time that you have the opportunity. And if you would, if you'd fill out an attendance card in the front of you on the pew where we could have a record of your attendance, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. 
Just a few, uh, just a few announcements this morning. Um, put all these glasses here. Uh, Diane and Delilah are home uh, sick with a stomach bug. Miss Jeannie's home sick with the flu. Let's keep her in our prayers. We're glad Walt's with us today. Hopefully she kept the dogs at home, Walt. Uh, we want to, uh, our heartfelt sym uh, sympathies are, are, we learned that uh, last Sunday, Harry Smith passed away in his sleep. And uh, we do send our, our deepest condolences uh, to his wife, Debbie, and his family and friends. For those of you who knew Harry, uh, he was a great example of what we should be as Christians. He was always very thankful, regardless of his situation. Uh, and we're going to miss, we're going to miss Harry. Also, uh, we want to remember Dorothy Pierce. Uh, if, you, if you haven't got a bulletin, you can get one on the foyer outside of the auditorium on the left. Uh, if you're interested in sending any type of memorial law, I think uh, that we, uh, we have a foundation uh, listed in the bulletin where you can, you can send those uh, uh, flowers or donations there. And we want the flowers. Also, we want to remind everybody that our evening services uh, will be moving 6 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. Uh, on January 1st. So we're going to start the new year out um, at 6 o'clock. Also, we would like to thank Pam for, for this uh, month's bulletins. And we also would like you, you all to uh, remember those who have a birthday and anniversary this year. And that can be found in the bulletins. Um, so let's wish them a happy birthday. And we hope to see each and every one of you next uh, next Sunday, which is Christmas morning. We will be on a regular schedule. So if you can't make Bible study, if you're open to prayer this early, we'd still like to have it for the worship service. So please make plans to attend here with us uh, Christmas morning. Uh, in this morning's worship service, uh, Brother Dennis Tran will be having our lesson. Uh, Dale Maddox will be reading our scripture for us this morning. Joel Foster will be uh, leading us in our psalm service. And our closing prayer will be by Brother Vern Johnson. And before we get started, if you would bow with me, we will go to our Father in Heaven in prayer. Mm -hmm. Almighty God and our Father who art in Heaven, hallowed be their great and holy name. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for this day that you've given us, this opportunity that we have to gather here with our Christian brothers and sisters this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, to sing songs of praises unto thee, Gather around thy table to remember the sacrifice of Jesus and to sing songs of praises unto thee. We're so thankful, Father, for this country we live in. We're thankful for this, our, our many freedoms and blessings, especially the freedom to be able to worship without fear of persecution. Father, we know that that's, that's not possible in some parts of the world. People are persecuted and, and even killed for their, for their faith and their belief in you. Dear Lord, we are thankful for your word and the truth that is found in it. Pray, Lord, that we would seek and seek your word and seek the truth each and every day, that we would all continue to grow in love and understanding of, of one another and of thy word. Pray, Lord, that we would always apply thy word to our life to continue our Christian walk, and that we would always try to gain the knowledge that we need to Teach others of thy word. We are thankful, Father, again for the plan of salvation that your word explains and provides for us. We know, Lord, that if we are obedient to thy word to the end of our days, that we will have that home in heaven with you one day. Dear Lord, we, are, we pray this morning for Brother Dennis as he brings us our lesson. We pray that he would have a ready recollection of the things that he has studied, that he will be able to give us this lesson and that we will be able to understand the lesson and then we will be able to make the application of that lesson again to our lives. So thankful Father for our, uh, our first responders. We, we pray for them at this time, especially during these holidays. We pray for our men and women in the military, both here and abroad. We pray that you would bring them home safe to their families during these holidays. We pray, Father, for our firemen and our police our police departments, our hospital service, we just pray, Lord, that as they're being overwhelmed with sickness, that 
they would be able to care for, for these folks and get them well, get them home for the holidays as well. We, do, we are thankful again, Father, for your church uh, here in Malden and in your church the world over. And we do pray that the truth will always be taught. We do pray, Lord, uh, for this great country, and we pray, we pray for our government. We pray that they would, they would make the laws uh, for us, for your people, go along the lines of your word. Dear Lord, we pray that you would defeat those laws that are contrary to your word. We just pray that as your children, Father, that we would always stand up for your word and stand up for what's right. We do pray, Father, as we go through the further exercise of service that all that is sudden, said and done is according to your will and pleasing in your sight, and that your will will always be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short this morning. Prayer we offer is in the loving name of Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Ancient words. Ancient words.
So uh, we'll read Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Well, now I have a prayer for our bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us now as we partake of this bread, which represents Christ's body that was hung on the cross. May we as Christians take of it in a manner well pleasing unto thee. Christ, I may pray. Amen. Amen.
Now we'll continue your prayer for the fruit of the vine. Our kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to partake of this, the fruit of the vine, which represents the shared blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we all partake of this in a manner pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our work of service is giving back to the Lord as He's blessed each and every one of us with. If you would, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 16, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. And it reads, Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I have given orders to the church of the Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by <coughs> him and store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come, when I have a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, let me and Bessie give it to us there at home. Give it to us, Spirit of Lord. Uh, this, this may be used for the church of the morning. <coughs> if it be scenarios, give it to us. If it asks for a portion, that ought to be used. If it, this may be used. If it just gives, they got to cross Calvary. Let's pray. Amen. Four, eight. Four, eight. Four, eight. <coughs> Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leaves me in this world below. Anywhere without him. Where we
with Jesus, I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hand may lead me over drearest ways, anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere. Shadows round about me creep, knowing I shall wake and never more to roam. Anywhere with Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. encouragement will be three, six, nine. Three, six, nine. Before Brother Davis comes to speak to us, five, zero, five. Five, zero, five. That was not the right time. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall
Scripture reading is going to be Acts 2, verses 6 through 8. It's strong on the thing. So it's Acts 2, 6 through 8. It says, Now when this was no noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Can you imagine being in a foreign country? A whole bunch of other people from all over the world and all of a sudden you have a small group of men that are speaking in your own language. Not just any men, but fishermen, tax collectors, common people. And you can imagine these people from all over the world, these Jews, they're on Pentecost, hearing these men speaking in their own tongue. They wanted to know how these men, these apostles, could speak in their language. This very notable miracle had occurred, and it was evident to them. As we consider the question, how do we hear? We need to understand the importance of hearing in the New Testament. The word here we find 130 times in the New Testament. Hearing is found 23 times and the word heard 242 times. This is the premium that's placed on hearing God's word. Our faith is based on hearing and what we hear. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the Word of God. If we want to have that saving faith, then we must open our ears to God's Word. There was Jesus who initially had placed so much hearing, so much importance on hearing. In Matthew 11, verse 15, he said, He who has ears, let him hear. He wanted the people to really hear what he had to say. Not only just the words that he was mouthing, but he wanted them to process it through their minds, to comprehend the, the meaning of his words. Without proper hearing, there cannot be proper comprehension. Husbands, how many times have your wives said, did you hear what I said? Most of the time, what we hear is what Charlie Brown hears. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we hear words being spoken, but we're not taking it in. But Jesus wanted us to hear, to process it, to understand it with full comprehension. He even addressed the congregations in Revelations chapters 2 and 3. Where it says that he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It's sad that we have so many people who will not hear the gospel. Even Jesus knew that this would not be the case. Especially when he was sending his apostles out on that limited commission. In Matthew 10 and verse 14, he commanded them, he said, If anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that house or town. This verse carries the idea of acceptance to the words of the disciples. But Jesus also attached consequences by not hearing. We're down in verse 15, he says that it would be more tolerable for those 
who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah that were destroyed there then for themselves. This was the case of Stephen in Acts chapter 7. Stephen was speaking. He was saying some very profound things, truths, if you will. But in verse 57 of Acts 7, it says that they stopped their ears. They heard what he said. They knew those words to be true. But when the finger was pointed to them, they put their hands over their ears. They rejected those truthful words. But even we find examples in the Old Testament in Isaiah 6. Isaiah was prophesying to the Jew about the Jew's stubbornness. In verses 9 and 10, he was inspired by God to write, and he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull. Make their ears heavy and blind their eyes. For if they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts, turn away and be healed. Now think about this for just a moment. If proper hearing was being taken place by the Jews during this time, they would have understood what God was saying. Their understanding would have led to them being healed and converted. The scripture does tell us that there were some that did hear, but the majority rejected the message. They closed their ears to the truth. We don't find anything different today. Nothing has changed. It's still the same thing. You would have thought that when Martin Luther reared his head and had this great reformation, that people would have turned back to the Bible because for the first time in centuries, the Bible was available to them. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Man has fallen back to the age-old trap of listening but not hearing. And we have the hearing without the actions. Why is it that the religious world relies on just a few men to tell them what the Bible means? What we need is more like the church of Thessalonica, the brethren there because they heard, they received God's word, and Paul commended it on them in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. Paul says, and we thank God continually for this, that you received the word of God, which you heard from us. You accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it really was, the word of God, which is at work in you believe. They heard God's word. They believed it to be that inspired word. And this is the example of proper view. But we have changed the gospel to mean many different things. For some, they provided shortcuts to salvation. They do this to appeal to people for the sake of numbers. I'm not saying that they're willingly deceiving people, though there's probably some out there who are. The majority are teaching things that they grew up with. Proper hearing must take place in order for us to be saved. If there's no hearing, there can't be any believing. If there is no believing, there is only condemnation waiting for those individuals. Jesus equates believing in Mark 16, 16 as one part of salvation. Just one part, but a very important part. 
And by understanding the importance of God's word, we can then see that our souls are in balance. How many times have you talked to someone about the Bible, but they refuse to hear it? They would rather have someone tell them what the Bible says. Many of them are going through life oblivious of their true spiritual state. There are those out there who are living selfishly. There are those out there who are continually addicted to temporary pleasures. But as long as they're church on Sunday morning, they believe that they are children of God. They believe that they have this place in heaven. How many times have you heard, well, this person is in heaven, this person is playing golf, this person is doing this or doing that. He's up there fishing with people because they don't know the word of God. I don't know about you, but after this life, I'm ready for a nap. I want to go to sleep. And I want God to wake me up with that trumpet. In all reality, these people are in a car with no engine and no wheels. They can sit in it, but they're not going anywhere. This is hearing God's word through filters. They filter God's word through doctrines of men. They filter it through their own conscience. Every verse that is read is filtered through grace only, or faith only, or some other doctrine of man. And when they study their Bible, if they truly study, these prejudices are there with them in their study because someone told them already what those verses mean. And all too often, we put too much faith in one's religious training. Many times you go past churches on the marquee, you see the preacher's name up there and it's Dr. So-and-so or the right reverend so-and-so or whatever, whatever. How many have gone to college and put so much faith in professors because they've got these letters behind their name? We seem to think that they have all the answers. We put our faith people telling us what God's word is. And then we also have those who allow their conscience to be their guide in religious matters that are not found in scripture. And even those who believe that just being good ensures a spot in heaven. But in these things they contradict scripture. For James 2.17 Reminds us that faith also by itself without works is dead. We need to remove these filters if we have them. We need to remove them so that we can hear properly. We place too much trust in preachers. And if we go closed minded, we become hard of hearing. We need to come to God's word with open ears and an open mind. The Thessalonians were commended because they came to believe that what they heard was God's word. And they accepted that word as it such. Everything that is taken through the ears needs to be filtered through God's word not man's ideas, not doctrines, and not one's conscience. If what we hear is contrary to God's word, then we need to reject it. Too many today reject the truth in favor of man's 
ideas. I hope that we will never be a people that would offend Jesus by not hearing, but be a people that hear as Jesus would have us to hear. Take off the filters. Accept God's pure word as is written. For it's the only power to save mankind. It's exactly what Romans 1 verse 16 tells us. That is the power that saves the earth. How is our hearing today? How is it? Is it a hearing that comes truly from God's word? And so I'm not hypocritical about it. Don't take what I say as the gospel truth. Look at it for yourself. Search the scriptures. If you find that I'm in error, tell me. I don't want to be in error. But I don't believe that people should blindly follow somebody because they like them. Search out the truth so that you can assure your salvation. If you're hearing God's word this morning and God's word is telling you what you need to be saved, we want to give you that opportunity this morning. <clears throat> hearing and believing God's word, that faith leads us to repentance. That repentance leads us to that confession and that confession leads us to having our sins forgiven in New Testament baptism. That's what God's word says cleanses us from sin. We're never going to pray our way into heaven, ever. Unless we obey the gospel completely. If there's anyone that has a need this morning, we ask that you come as together we stand and we sing. Jesus, a loving shepherd, calleth thee now to come into the fold of safety where there is rest and room, come in the strength of manhood, come in the morn of youth, into the fold of safety, into the way of truth. Lovingly, tenderly calling is he, make sure the water comes to me. Patiently waiting there, standing I see, Jesus, my shepherd divine, Jesus, a loving shepherd, gave his dear life for thee. Tenderly now he's calling, wanderer, come to me. Hateful without his danger, Christ is the shepherd blessed. Enter the fold of Satan. Enter the place of rest, lovingly, tenderly calling is he, wanderer, wanderer, come unto me, patiently waiting there, standing I see, Jesus the shepherd divine, lingering is but folly, wolves are abroad today, seeking the sheep. Calling is he, wanderer, wanderer, come unto me. Anciently waiting, there standing I see, Jesus, my shepherd divine. Please proceed. Thank you. Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. For all the many blessings you have given us throughout our lives. We're thankful for the opportunity that we've had to come here to worship you this morning, to sing songs of praises, to hear a portion of thy word spoken unto us. We pray that 
We will take the things that we have heard here this morning, apply them to our lives, become stronger Christians. Mm-hmm. That we will be shining examples to others and to you. We pray that you would meet with the ones with Dorothy Pierce and Mary Smith with the families of them that you would talk to them. <coughs> We pray that you would be with the ones that are sick, the ones that are shuddering, that you would watch over them. We pray that you would always watch over us, that you would guide, guard, and direct us throughout our lives, and forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.